Well, let's bring in Coach right now. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Chris Budden, Brooke Weisbrot, and Mike O'Donnell joining uh, you. Uh, you picked now at the preseason number one in the polls. When you look at what you have coming back, but also some new guys, what can we expect out of your team this year? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure, Chris. Um, you know, we've we've been able to um, get our program or get our team ready each year by taking a lot of new guys and getting them to uh, buy in and fit in. Um, but it's always a challenge. There's no guarantees. Um, you know, it's it's astounding to me that you lose Quentin Grimes. You know, first round draft choice, Dejan Giroux, um, the um, defensive player of the year, uh, Justin Gorham. Um, uh, I'm not sure if he led the league in rebounding last year or not. Uh, if not, he's one of the best rebounders in the league. And then our best shot blocker in uh, Bryson Gresham. And a guy that was kind of a point person in our pick and roll coverage is, uh, you know, we lost a lot in the. Uh, so it's it's really surprising to me that we would be picked to finish uh, first in the league based on what we, you know, when you lose as much as we do, you know, you usually get picked in the middle of the pack, and rightfully so, you know, because that team usually has to uh, reload or get some new guys to, to fit in. But, um, you know, we've been here before. You know, last year we lost uh, Fabian to ACL, Chris Harris, um, Nate Hinton to the uh, NBA, and uh, – uh, Caleb Mills transferred after only four games, so we had to replace all those guys. And um, in the year before, it was four more. Uh, don't remember who they were. Um, yes, I do. Galen, Galen Robinson, Corey Davis, um, Armani Brooks, and uh, Breon Brady. Um, and even the year before that, I think it was Rob Gray, Devin Davis, uh, Nurizan, and and um, um, I'm, I'm missing. somebody so yeah we've been here before but there's no guarantees you know um, um, running practices last March um, and and uh, getting ready for the tournament uh, both tournaments and then all the way up to your final game you know there's such a comfort zone where you have your guys and then the next time you practice is October um, uh, official practice and you realize how much you lost and where the new guys are. We're, we're nowhere near where we finished, obviously. You know, when we finished the season, um, you know, we were one of the best teams in the country. Uh, but starting this season, this team is nowhere near as good as that team is, uh, um, especially in October, I'm sure November, December. But I think eventually this team can get some traction and, uh, and become a good team. Um, but that's the fun part about taking a new group and teaching them and guiding them and um, trying to get them to play for each other. Uh, it's all, all the stuff that a coach does, I, and I still enjoy doing that. Okay, we'll take our first question from Joseph Duarte with uh, Houston Chronicle, please. Good morning, Kelvin. Good morning, Joseph. Uh, Kelvin, I wonder, that now that you've had the, uh, the guys on campus for a little while and gotten in some practices, Curious uh, specifically about the the new guards, uh, Tyler and uh, Tajay. What what you've seen and, and how you know? I know it's early, but how those two can sort of you know it be inserted into what you want to do to to and, and how guard you know heavy you know you you play. Um, Kyler is uh, a good shooter. Um, 
I think uh, I think the way I would describe his game as it fits for us is that uh, he doesn't really have a lot of glaring weaknesses. I'm not sure if he has. Uh, uh, I think his, he's a he's a plus shooter for sure. Uh, but I don't know if there's anything else in his game that you would say is outstanding. Uh, and I think that's a compliment in that he's a really solid player. He's pretty good at a lot of things, maybe great at hardly any of them, but he's pretty solid just about everything. You know, he's uh, he can guard, uh, doesn't try to do too much, uh, good decision maker. Um, um, you know, he's he's not rebounding the ball like we want him to, but um you know we've we've got you know we've got some time to get him there something we work on every day but uh Tajay is is a, a dynamic athlete uh, but you know you got to decide whether you want to win dunk contests play for the Harlem Globetrotters or go get a rebound i mean you can't you know they, they don't all mix you know he's i want him to use his athleticism uh to help impact winning uh you know you know not stay after practice and do dunk contests and pe- people have no clue what basketball is. I think that matters. You know, what matters to me is go block a shot, chase down somebody and pin a ball on the backboard. Go, go get above everybody else and go get a rebound. Be the first one to the floor after a loose ball. Um, use your athleticism in, in ways that impact winning. Those are the things that we're working on him, uh, him on. But I, I think, you know, we're going to depend on both those guys, um, um, to help us uh, be a good team eventually. We'll take the next question from Chris Gardner, please. Houston Round Ball Review. Morning, Coach. Just to pick off Joseph's questions, how has Josh Carlton in the front court looked for it so far? Uh, he's He's got a long way to go. They all do. You know, we're not a very good team right now. I mean, it's October. Um, I, I don't know that... Um, uh, the two guys that has stood out to me in practice have been Fabian and Marcus. Um, um, you know, Tremont's, uh, uh, Tremont's improved. Uh, he's he's going to continue to get better. But, you know, those two guys are held back because of all the new guys. You know, we're we're not – we're a long way from being a well-oiled machine. Hopefully we will, will be eventually, but we're we're certainly not now. You know, we're so far behind where we were this time last year – because, you know, the guys that were playing last year, uh, Justin was in his third year in the program. Fabian was in his fourth year in the program. Uh, excuse me, Fabian wasn't here. Justin was in his third year in the program. Marcus was in his second year. Um, Quentin was in his second year. Bryson, third year. Uh, who am I missing here? Um, uh, we had so many veteran guys. And, and this year, we just don't have a lot of veteran guys. Um, guys that, that impacted winning last year. You know, Marcus is uh, has the most experience from last year. Uh, Fabian didn't get here to mid February, uh, so you know those those guys are having to slow down so the other guys can catch up. Uh, so you know, I, I I live in today. You know, I, I don't live in uh, prognostications or opinions or or what might be. You know, you you have to live for today, the moment, and the moment right now. Um, you know, we're in the middle of our process. Uh, I like this team. Um, we have great kids to coach. Um, you know, they, they want to be good. And if, and if they just keep, if they stay the course, um, you know, big Josh is a good example. You know, he's, we got him in good shape, but, um, you know, you know, we're not, <laughs> you know, we're not trotting him out there for a magazine shoot. You know, we're, we, we want him to be able to apply it for how we play. You know, all these guys came from good programs, outstanding coaches to guys that transferred in. But, uh, you know, the only thing that matters now is how they do here with this coaching staff, and they're all making the adjustment. Take the next question, please, from Dayon Dunlap from Apollo Houston, please. Hey, good morning, Coach. Good morning. Uh, just starting um, looking at the previous years when you guys had success, you had really good point guards, starting with Galen, then Dejan. Just talk about um, what are you looking to see from Marcus and at the point guard position. Also, Jamal shed from a point guard perspective to help lead your team. Just talk about how you coach and how much um, pressure kind of you put on the point guard to kind of lead the team um, from playing wise, play style wise. Yeah, well, we have 
um, everything starts with how we practice and the standards that we hold our kids to. And that's my job is, is to hold them accountable to the standards uh, that we've created here. Um, but Marcus uh, and Jamal are two different kind of points guards. Um, you know, Marcus is a, a better overall offensive player. I think uh, they're both good defensive players. I think for Jamal, it's just consistency, uh, to, to the day to the day. You know, you can't have a good day and then slide back um, and not take step forwards. So it's, it's hard to take steps forward unless you're consistent with your approach uh, every day. Um, but Marcus is, does, is not going to play the position like Dejan. Dejan is better at Marcus certain things. Marcus is better than Dejan at certain things. But we, we want – to adjust uh, the way we do things to Marcus. You know, we, we did Some technical difficulties going on in Houston. I think it's interesting. Coach Samson just pumping the brakes a little bit. I know everyone thinks that we should be at the top. There's a reason that they are, because for three years in a row, they've had to reload, and they've still been ranked uh, number one in the preseason polls. Are you buying what he's saying, or do you still you, you agree with the hype, Mike? I would never disagree with Kelvin Sampson <laughs> for fear of that wrath. No, no, but, but he's, he's right from one of the reasons why Houston is, has arrived right now in the national standpoint is it is day to day with them. He really embodies that. His players bring that to attention. And I think, Brooke, you brought up a really great point, which is going to be interesting to see. Dejan Drow was the heart and soul of that team from a leadership standpoint. And you know, Houston basketball, as much as we talk about Kelvin Sampson, it's really built from the inside out from a player's perspective. Who's that guy? And we talk about leadership sometimes very ca in a cavalier sense, but. It matters to that culture. Who's that guy or that other guy that has to step up, show the new faces, the freshmen, the transfers, who are very talented, Kyler Edwards, Tajay Moore, Josh Carlton, this is how we play, or no, we don't do this here. I think one thing, too, to consider going through last year, all 15 guys experienced COVID last year, and they would get on FaceTimes, all 15. Man, we're talking about guys getting on a FaceTime call, <laughs> talking for hours to each other. So that's the kind of culture and chemistry that the Houston Cougars create for themselves. I think that guy who's going to kind of take the spot for Dejan Giroux is going to be Fabian White. I agree. He participated yeah. in as many drills as he could while he was rehabbing through that ACL injury. And he just wants to be there. So I think he's going to be that guy to step up with the energy. Yeah, we mentioned Quentin Grimes not uh, has gone to the NBA. I, one of the quotes that, he, that Coach said, use your athleticism in ways that impact winners with young guys. That's hard to do when you come from other places where you're the man and you had to be a part of this team situation. Mike, for the offense for Houston, where do they need to replicate the points that they miss with Grimes gone? Well, obviously, you initially talk about the three-point line because Grimes was the top ten three-point shooter in the country in terms of percentage and made threes. We don't talk about it enough because the, the Houston narrative is, hey, they're great on defense, great culture, but offense is lacking. I mean, they had they had two players in the top 20 in the nation for total made threes last season, Quentin Grimes and Marcus Sasser. Tajay Moore and Kyler Edwards are going to have to fill that void from the three-point line with Grimes. But an interesting thing is, with so much emphasis on Marcus Sasser, and rightfully so, he's an incredibly talented individual, where does the playmaking come from? Because it's not just shoot a three, maybe hope you get an offensive rebound, kick it back out for a three, which was a recipe for success last season. I think you almost have more playmakers from an ISO standpoint with this Houston team, with the transfers coming in and some of the freshmen. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw Houston play a little bit faster on offense. I got your answer for playmaker, Tremont Mark. He started yeah. to get some serious playing time toward the end of last season, and you could see his confidence get better and bigger with each game, with each rep that he took. So I'm excited to see what he worked on over the summer to see his growth year one to year two because Kelvin Sampson was really excited about him as a freshman. Can't wait to see what he's going to do this year. What does a run like they made last year to get to the Final Four, what can that do for a team? I mean, I, I know they lost a lot, and I know that it's only October, and there's still a ways to go. But what Coach Sampson has done has proven work. So what can success like that show a team, especially the transfers and the young guys coming in? I think if you continue to just stay the course and listen to Coach and you know do the things that matter, diving on the floor, going for offensive rebounds, getting the block shots, those are the things that get you to championship moments. So it's not the windmill dunks. It's, it's not the highlights and the glamour shots. 
I think that's what is, is really cool about the Houston program. It's very old school in a great way. And I think when players buy into that, you talked about being it, it being a player development program. That's just that's become the mark of the Houston Cougars, and it will get you to the NBA. But more excitedly, like they have unfinished business. Yeah. Now, that's not just on the lady side. Mm -hmm. I'm curious for you, Mike, because you, you in the practices that you've seen, how much growth do they make from in October now to the end of this season? I mean, we saw them playing some fantastic basketball by late. February, March last year that maybe is not the team that they are now. In, in a Kelvin Sampson team, how much room for growth is there? Well, you, you, first of all, you can't be mentally soft and play for the Houston Cougars, yeah. right? Because you're talking about player growth and player development. They are literally trying to get better individually and collectively in every single drill. That is the, that's the real goal. And a lot of teams and coaches try to do that, and some do it successfully, but Kelvin Sampson and his staff do it really, really well. And I would like to go back to one point when we look at the macro of Houston basketball and going to the Final Four and why that's important. I think two big things is, number one, the community involvement with the city of Houston only gets bigger and it grows. You, Brooke, you know how important that is when, when, a, when a, uh, a stadium is packed and local media and national media are both talking about it in sync. That's huge. Recruiting is a big deal. It, it totally changes the recruiting landscape of not necessarily, you know, the exact player that they want. But when you walk into mom and dad's home, family member's house with their, with their son and say, listen, we want to get you better as men. You're going to have growth. You're going to have an opportunity to play in the NBA. And by the way, we just came off a of Final Four. There's only three other teams in the country that can say that. Yeah. That, that matters. Yeah. Well, Kelvin Sampson saying we're not a very good football team or football basketball team right now. Well, they're going to have to get good pretty fast because their non-conference schedule is legit. When you look at this, Virginia, Ooh. November 16th, Oklahoma at UCF. These are some other non-conference ones. Here's who else they play. They got a Butler, Alabama, Oklahoma State. I mean, this is a legit test for them early on. Yeah, I think uh, that Virginia game is going to be the first one to 40 <laughs> is the winner. Because there's not going to be a whole lot of offense in that game. That's there will be a lot of offensive rebounds in that game. <laughs> yes, there will. Yes, there will. <laughs> So if we're not if we're, if we're if we're pumping on the brakes of this team, when you look at the production and you're Kelvin Sampson at the beginning, and you lose these the heart and soul of a team, how do you identify that in just a month? I mean, even Quint. I mean, Quentin was a guy that you like, you enjoyed playing with, right? The personality he brought a lot of fun. Dejan brought that grit, that toughness. You've been a player on a team, and you too. Like, how do you identify that in a month before you got to go and play a, a UVA? I think there's a common thread with the men's and the women's programs at Houston, and that's competitiveness. And and you said it too. In every drill, the coaches demand that you be as competitive as possible, and that's where you start to see separation. Who can last longer? Who's going to step up that game and their mental edge? to be that leader and that guy on the squad for Houston. So I think it's about the, the environment that the coaches create, the players respond to it, and they produce. I think when you try to force an individual identity, you fail. I think ultimately you have to guide your players along for what you want them to represent from a Houston culture perspective. But then Marcus Sasser is not Dejan Giroux. But how do you, uh, you, you heard Coach Sampson talk about it, how do we elevate Marcus's game by things that we do well that we may not know that we actually do well? And the most interesting part of this Houston team, and you talk about development too, we're talking a lot about the guards. I, I think Houston's front court is the best it's been in four years, especially with Josh Carlton coming in. They are big, they are mean, they are physical and tough. And I think that complements the, the guards who are a little bit more score friendly than maybe Dejan Giroux. So maybe the toughness, if, you know, if you're looking at a seesaw, where does the toughness actually come from? I think last season, a lot of it was the guards. This season, I think it's going to be the front court.